Today, I'm going to be talking to you about Class Companion and how I use Class Companion to leverage my students' writing abilities and to give them immediate and personalized feedback. So let's get started. If you go to classcompanion.com, you can see that there are a number of powerful resources already available. As you scroll through Class Companion, there are um, various resources, how-to guides. You can even get certified, which I went ahead and did do. You can also play around here with teacher stories, get help with different questions that you have. But I really love the videos in this home area that kind of walk you through best practices. So what does it actually look like? Well, log in. It's free for teachers. Continue with Google. And I just use my APS K-12 account. Now you can see that I've been using it this year already, and I've already created some classes, but you probably have it. So let's start from scratch and create a class together. When you go to create a class, you give it a name. So we'll say world history for my, my content area. I'm teaching 10th grade. I want to use the Georgia Standards of Excellence because I'm going to be doing an on-level class. But please note, advanced placement is also an option here for those of you teaching AP. All right, I've created my class. Now I can invite students. I can add students by copying a link to share, which is how I prefer to do it. Although you can also show a join code in Google Classroom and or in uh, on your screen here and have everybody join from um, from this link. That's also great. I prefer to simply copy link to share. And once it's copied, I share it in Google Classroom and my students come in that way. If I go to my assignments and go to add assignment, you can see that I have three options, generate with AI, import, or find in content library. If you have an assignment that you already love, you can import it as a file. Um, you can start from scratch as well. Um, I tend to do a combination of generate with AI, start from scratch, and find in content library. I don't tend to import. Um, although that is a newer feature, they are always rolling out new features. That's worth saying as well. Class Companion is constantly improving, constantly adding new options, new standards, new resources. So keep checking back if when you play with it, it doesn't have exactly what you need right now. It may in the future. Let's look at an assignment that I did from scratch. If we create from scratch, we have a series of steps to go through here. First, we decide what grade, and I teach 10th grade. My standards have already imported for me, and I can give this a title. So maybe I want to make this an essay about the rise of the Byzantines. All right, I can decide what unit this falls into. So for my purposes, this would be, let's see. Oh, these are all AP units. So I can just type to add a new option if I want to. I also have the option, uh-oh, search or create. Okay, um, we're going to call this um, Empire's Rise, right? We'll have a new, a new unit title that we give it. And topic. I can also add a new option here if I wanted to. Now that I've created that, I go to AI settings. This is really important. I think a lot of people blow right through this. Um, Class Companion gives students feedback using AI, but it also uses AI uh, to kind of teach itself. So this is where you can share information with the AI so it has context on the assignment. So I will show you an example where I did, um, I uploaded a bunch of documents. This way the AI knows what your students know and it only holds them accountable for that. It kind of allows the AI to understand what you did in class and use that to shape how it responds to students. This I think is so, so important. So if you have any of that kind of resource, absolutely upload it here. You can also include questions. Do you have an introduction? Do you need to add a multiple choice, an essay, a short answer? This is where you add any of those details, an introduction text. You can also here add rubrics. This could be a rubric that already exists in the system or you might want to create a rubric. If we go to add rubric, oh, it looks like I need to add a question in order for this to work. Let's see. Let's add a short answer. 
why was the Byzantine Empire so powerful? I should clarify that. At its height. Okay, so that's my question. When it goes to scoring, I can add additional scoring criteria if I want to. The answer must do what? Must mention certain things. Do I want to make sure that it mentions Justinian, for example, etc. All right, now we go to rubrics. And I can add a rubric. I can generate with AI. I can import one, or I can find it in the content library. Or I can start from scratch, whatever I want to do. Let's see what content library has for me. In the rubric library, there are a bunch that you can see that other creators, other teachers have uploaded into their system. I want to see AP World History. Okay, this is an interesting one. We'll go with SAQ. Short answer, AP History short answer question. We can try that one. And I can use the rubric. But again, I don't have to use a pre-made one. I can always make one. Finally, submission. I get to choose how many times students submit their essays. So I don't want them to submit twice, three times. I tend to go with three. Um, and this means that students are able to reflect and rewrite. I can also set a time limit. I will say, because students are doing this often in a building with limited Wi-Fi, setting a time limit may not work well if you're doing this in class. But if you're doing this as homework, you can absolutely set a time limit for students. If there's uh, multiple choice questions or multiple questions in the set, you can decide if questions can be answered in any order or if they must do them in a particular order. You can also decide when they get their feedback, immediately or delayed. Finally, you can hide. You can decide if you want to hide the rubric, hide scores, if you want to shuffle multiple choice questions or disable pasting. And there's also accommodations here for our students with disabilities like text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and translation for our ESOL students. There's also some response integrity things, but worth noting, only some of these are going to be available to you with the free account. It will detect pasting, however, which is wonderful. Once you feel confident with all the settings you've chosen, you simply click publish, and you can decide which classes you want to publish to. You can decide when you want to schedule it, when you want it to be due, and if you want it to close at a certain date. If you're happy, click publish and your essay is right here. Now I want to show you some actual student submissions and what the real uh, class looks like. So what you can see here is an AP class where some students have been doing some submissions. When I go to this dashboard, I can see all of my students and I can see some statistics on them. How many did, did use the dispute feature? How many asked for help? How many tried again? And we'll start to see some scores begin to put, begin to um, summarize for students in terms of their um, their median scores as I get more and more data on each student. Looking at the assignments, I want to show you one example of an essay um, that I did from scratch. So this is a Roman Empire thesis where I specifically wanted to be able to judge students' ability to write a thesis statement. So if we look at this particular assignment... I'm going to edit the assignment just so you can see what I put in. I selected advanced placement as my standard, world history. Under AI settings for AI context, one of the things that I did, but you can't see here, is that I uploaded some of the documents and access resources that students were using in this lesson. So the AI was able to learn from that. Under questions, I put the question that students were expected to answer. And under rubrics, I selected the AP short answer question rubric. Under submission, I allowed students to get instant feedback and to do up to three responses. It's also worth noting that when you're doing this, under submission, you can decide whether you want submissions to be um, done on paper, digitally, or both. So let's actually add an assignment into that practice classroom that I created for us. Let's go with generate with AI, just so you can see that option. 
I'm using the Georgia Standards of Excellence. I want it to be a generic essay, objective. I want students to write a single paragraph essay, uh-oh, would help if I could spell this morning, about the strengths of the Byzantine Empire at its height. I can also upload those context files here. It may take a second to generate, but it usually comes through fairly quickly. Okay. So they titled it The Strengths of the Byzantine Empire for me. I can select units if I want to and topics if I want to. I can give it the context. And you can see that it's already generated for me an introduction. It's also created my essay for me, my essay prompt. In this section, you will explore the various strengths of the Byzantine Empire during its peak. Consider aspects such as its military, economy, culture, and administration. Use your knowledge from class discussions and readings to support your points. And then you can see the actual essay prompt. Write a single paragraph essay discussing the strengths of the Byzantine Empire at its height. Consider factors such as military strategies, economic stability, cultural achievements, and administrative efficiency. Provide specific examples to support your points. So it gives students really good guidance and some additional supports. And we'll get submission here. Okay, great. So for essay types, you can say if it's typed, handwritten, or either. And then students have the choice of how they want to upload their responses. Again, you can decide, decide if you want maximum attempts per question. I like three. You can set times, etc. All the other options are the same. But I really wanted you to see that students can handwrite their response. And if they decide to upload through a handwritten model, they'll be able to upload a picture. So we'll publish that. Oh, it's saying I need to add a rubric. We'll generate with AI for this too. At any point when they're used, you're using the generate with AI feature, you may want to override what it gives you. Again, no AI is perfect, right? It's going to have issues, but use your best judgment as a teacher regarding whether this rubric suits your students and your needs. This actually is pretty good. For today and for our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, great. So I feel good about that. And I'm going to publish. Now that the Strengths of the Business Empire is there, I can actually preview as a student. So this is what your students see. Your students see the background information that was provided. It also gives you the prompt. Students can click to view rubric. And that'll open up for them so they understand what they're being asked to accomplish. And then they can decide if they want to type their response right here or handwrite. If they need to handwrite, they can simply upload images from their phone if they want to. What does student feedback look like? That, honestly, is the most important thing that Class Companion does for us, is the grading. So if you are curious about that, I've got some great examples here for you. So these are some essays written by my students, and you can see the kind of feedback that Class Companion has provided. Under submissions, okay, so let's look at a student who got all three points. Okay, so this student responded to this prompt here with his essay, and Class Companion's response is not just, yes, point, good job, whatever. Class Companion says your relationship is correct and well explained. You've successfully described the Inca's royal ancestor worship and its significance in their political organization. Well done. It is specific. It's kind. It's warm. Students have specifically said that they love the tone of Class Companion, that the feedback it gives them is kind, it's helpful, it helps shape them, and they really, really like getting feedback, even negative feedback from Class Companion because of the voice that it uses. This also shows me that the student took about one minute to write when they wrote their score and the response integrity. No pasting detected. Same thing here. This student 
got all the points. Oh, but look, on their third essay, they struggled a little bit. This is perfect. So you can see how Class Companion gives us some feedback to shape their second attempt. Class Companion says, your response provided a thoughtful explanation of how women's roles contributed to the development of culture and identity in Aztec society. However, it could be more focused on how these roles specifically shaped culture or social identity. Please try to refine your answer to emphasize the cultural or identity aspect. The student reattempted following those instructions. And Class Companion says, yes, your revised response is clearer and better connects the roles of women to the development of cultural identity in Aztec society. You've successfully explained how women's contributions were integral to Aztec culture and society or identity. Well done. Now, let's say the student disagreed with that. The student is able to flag and dispute any response that they get. So let's look at an example of someone being able to dispute. Here, a student has disputed the score that they received. They said, Ms. Tripp, I don't agree with this. So let's click on it and let's see what their issue was. So here, they've disputed. They said, hey, class companion said I didn't get the point, but I disagree. So I can look at their essay and I can read it for myself. And I can say, you know what? No, I, I do think that, you know, you shouldn't, you don't think you should have gotten the point, right? Um, and here's why. Uh, or, you know what? I agree. You should have gotten the point. So um, my final ruling here, I can say correct or incorrect, and I can explain why I gave that to the student. Students are all also um, able to, in their dispute, tell me why they believe they should have gotten a different score. So students can communicate with you using this method. And this can enable and open up some really powerful conversations and reflections between teachers and students. One thing I should note at this stage is that I don't give students a grade based on their score in Class Companion. I tell them, the computer doesn't grade you, I grade you. So when it comes to writing like this, I'm using Class Companion as a formative resource to get students writing, to get them reflecting, to get them um, taking those opportunities to rewrite and improve their skills. But I am not holding students liable for something that they are still learning how to do. Once I feel confident that Class Companion has shaped them into stronger writers, then I will kind of take the wheels off and I will hold them more accountable for the scores that they get in the gradings that I give them. But Class Companion is a wonderful way of giving formative grades and I usually give them as a completion grade. That's a personal best practice. How you do that in your own building is totally up to you. But what you can see here is that students are writing, they are being thoughtful, uh, and their scores are consistently quite good because they are getting lots of practice. I say that Class Companion single-handedly helped improve my AP scores last year. And this year, I've got students writing from the very first month as opposed to using Class Companion only in the second semester. So I'm excited to see what it does to their scores. Students have commented that they really like that Class Companion has um, a warm tone, that it gives them specific feedback, and they love being able to rewrite their responses to get a higher score. And because students know that they're being held accountable simply for practicing, not for the score that they get, it means that they're not as inclined to cheat or try and cut corners. They're able to use it as intended, a learning experience.